Check one.
seconds to go off. All right, let's get seated. Good evening. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, we welcome you to the Parkway School Board, School Board Candidate Forum for the April 7th election. This is the Tuesday, a week from Tuesday. My name is Becky Clausen, and I'm the treasurer of the St. Louis League of Women Voters. I will be your moderator for the evening. 
I want to thank each of the, the candidates for participating, and two of these candidates will be elected. They are, in order as they appear on the ballot, Beth Feldman. Put your hand up, Beth. <laughs> Sudhir Rehad and Kim Applebaum. Before I read the ground rules for tonight, I want to thank a few individuals who have worked hard to make tonight possible. Julie Behrens and Anna Menerick from the League Office, Pat Jones who sets up the candidate forums and gets us all here, and, and several committed members of the League who are here tonight. Evelyn, Beretta, Diane Madrell, um, Marty Ott, it's over there, and our timer, Barbara Harris. The League of Women Voters' mission is to empower citizens to participate meaningfully in the democratic process. The League believes that one of the best ways for voters to learn about people seeking election is to hear those candidates speak and answer questions in a public forum. Let me review the rules for tonight's forum. The candidates are seated in order that their names appear on the ballot. They will give their opening statements in that order and their closing statements in the reverse order. The candidates will have two minutes for an opening statement. Every question each candidate may answer if they want to and they have a minute for that. Um, and then they will have closing statements and that'll be two minutes. I will read the, read the questions and I, take, I may summarize some of the questions. Um, I re ensure that um, each candidate has an equal opportunity to answer the questions. I'll enforce the rules and this um, meeting is being streamed. Um, if there are any seriously disruptive people, which it doesn't look like we'll have, <coughs> I get to ask you to leave. I get to um, also determine which questions will not be answered, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Sometimes it is. The League provides a service to all of you to encourage citizen participation in government. Let's all be part of the solution. All right, we're ready for opening statements and we start with Ms. Feldman. Thank you to the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this forum. We appreciate the opportunity to speak in public on issues that are important to us. Good evening, my name is Beth Feldman and I'm running to retain my seat on the Parkway Board of Education. I'm currently serving in my seventh year on the board. This is my third year as president. I have lived in Chesterfield in the Parkway School District for the last 25 years with my husband, Buddy. Um, we have two children, Sam, who's with us tonight, who's a sophomore at Mizzou, and our daughter Mia is a senior at Parkway Central, who will soon be following her brother to Mizzou. Since I have a limited amount of time for this opening statement, I will list some of the initiatives that I've had a hand in during my time on the board, and please forgive me for speaking quickly. I was part of hiring one interim and one permanent superintendent, as part of passing Proposition S, a $94 million bond issue. We brought experiential and virtual learning to Parkway students. We implemented full day kindergarten for all Parkway students at no cost to families. We lengthened the elementary school day by 20 minutes, adding two full weeks of instructional time each year. We instituted the Algebra One initiative, strengthening our students' math skills. We offered free ACT students to all Parkway juniors a full five years before the state required it. We established professional learning communities, or PLCs. We opened three state-of-the-art science labs. We instituted double block English language arts and daily PE here in the middle schools. We established a new partnership with special school district to ser better serve the needs of our children. We launched a district-wide rollout of Google Apps for Education in our mobile app. We launched community education partnership with Rockwood that brought the Parkway Rockwood Community School to fruition. We introduced Infinite Campus, uh, which is a student information portal. We negotiated teacher and stu uh, support contracts. 
we led long-term energy conservation efforts by purchasing 30 natural gas buses. We built a natural gas filling station. Ready to begin? My name is Sudhir Rathor. Okay, I'm gonna need some more mic. My name is Sudhir. Can you guys hear me? My name is Sudhir Rathor. I'm originally from India, Gujarat. That's where Gandhi is from. I got my MBA here uh, in the United States and my Six Sigma black belt. I currently work with GM Family Enterprises, which is uh, the organization that brings Toyota in the U.S. market. Um, prior to working for GM Family, I used to work for Caterpillar, Nestle Purina, and Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. I have a son who is a junior at Parkway North, and he's also a wrestler. I lived in this city for five years. That has given me a great family and a neighborhood to live, and I'm really proud to do that. I used to um, volunteer at Food Bank, uh, Boys Hope, Girls Hope, and uh, Hard Walk at the Bush Stadium. This country has given me great education, amazing people, and a wonderful school for my son. And I'm very proud, and thank you for that. Um, if you know my background, I, I love to give back to the community. I'm a, I, I love to serve the community. And this is the reason I want to do something for our kids. I have a passion. Um, I bring a lot of experience, a um, lot of diverse experience from working from different companies. And I think that my contribution will make a big difference if given chance. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? I'm in denial still, so I have to put my glasses on. <laughs> First, I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum. Thank you so much. My name is Kim Applebaum, and my husband Paul and I have lived in the Parkway District for almost 20 years. I've enjoyed serving as a board member since I was elected in 2012, and believe that my first term was a profound and positive learning experience. I had to learn a lot. Um, when I flash back to those first few board meetings, I'm really thankful for the friendships that developed with parents, teachers, administrators, and board members. And actually, Beth, was uh, she was my acronym translator for quite some time. She'd sit next to me, and every time there was an acronym, she'd tell me what it was, and I kind of missed that because there's so many acronyms and I still don't remember them all. I have acquired a new appreciation for the work and dedication it takes to operate a large school district that keeps students as their top priority. It takes an entire board to work together, and although we are very different people, we work well together and listen to each other's ideas and concerns. We have excellent teachers and administrators who make it possible to creatively improve our schools, and they demonstrate flexibility when it comes to adjusting to the needs of the children. Making an exceptional education experience available to all students is an important goal and requires creative ideas. Our students are the future, and I feel Parkway prepares our kids to relate their education to the ever-changing world. As a parent, I'm thankful that Parkway encourages innovative thinking by developing curious, capable, and confident learners. I know you've all heard that. My oldest son, Matthew, will graduate in the spring, and as a mother, I am not ready for that. But I, have, I know that Parkway teachers have prepared him, so he is ready for it. Uh, Matthew attended preschool at Central High to kindergarten at Henry, Henry Elementary and uh, now a senior at West High. And in a couple more years, I'll get to say that about my youngest son as well. I look forward to... Con oh. Thanks. All right, now we're going to begin with your questions. I have several. Um, if you have a question, just hold it up and one of the league people will pick it up. Um, we will be... The questions will... They'll have one minute to respond to them. And we will vary who gets the first question. We're going to start with, the, with a very basic one. What is the role of the school board? Mr. Rahad? As long as I have researched, my uh, role of a school board is to um, 
overlook uh, responsibilities of a superintendent. And that's the only employee I think the school board has. Um, I also learned that you know there are always opportunities where school board members feel like they can interfere, but I think that's not uh, what is supposed to be happening. Thank you. All right, Kim. Um, that is true, and we do. Uh, Dr. Marty over there is really the only one that we should be uh, uh, in charge of. That we are in charge of, um, and we only have. Uh, well, we review and approve policies. And uh, to be a board member, I mean, actually, you should be a team player and build relationships. We're one voice, a team, and everyone's opinion counts. But really, Dr. Marty is that one that we, we watch out for. Ms. Feldman? Yes, in addition to the, the two that were already mentioned, we also approve our budget. So um, the, other two, the other two mentioned are, are um, important, but our budget is important, too. All right, our second question and um, Ms. Applebaum has this one. What prior experience do you have in public education that has prepared you to take on this position? Well, although I've never been an educator um, raising two children, and I've been very uh, involved in their education from, um, from grade school on up, I was always involved with room party planning and on the PTO, um, and so, and then now in high school on the uh, band boosters. So I've always been involved in each level. Ms. Feldman. Uh, thank you. Um, when my children were young, actually when Sam was in kindergarten, I uh, spent an hour or so every week in his kindergarten classroom doing math centers with the children, and that really developed my passion for working with kids, even though I'm also not a professional educator. When we moved to Green Trails, I was a room parent, and ultimately I became president of the PTO. During my watch as president of the PTO, we raised enough money in one year to renovate the school's library. That was originally foreseen as a two-year project. I worked on two tax campaigns for Parkway. I'm very proud to say that we passed both a bond issue and a tax initiative. Uh, I worked on the Government Relations Committee, and over the past seven years, I have spent many, 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 many hours learning the workings and meeting the people that make the school district tick. All right, Mr. Rahud. I was a student at some point, so definitely, you know, it takes a lot to be a student, and we can definitely understand what teachers go through. Not everybody gets a chance to be a teacher or play a role like the directors have. So, of course, I was not fortunate enough but my wife is a teacher, so I know exactly what a teacher's role is on a day-to-day -day basis and how much they have to go through you know, to perform their job. So I have a son who is a student. I can understand or relate a lot from a school. You know, we support that on a day-to-day -day basis and how we are involved in the community. So from that perspective, I can say I'm always involved in the education. All right. The next question is, what do you think the greatest threats to Parkway and the opportunities? And um, Ms. Feldman begins this one. Well, we just passed, as I said earlier, our $94 million bond issue. And one of the main things that we were trying to raise money for was for the safety and security of our school buildings in order to protect our students and staff. So we are going to be implementing new new cameras, new digital cameras throughout our buildings. We're also putting in safety glass, safety film on the glass that would um, prohibit uh, the entry of a bullet. We've instituted uh, camera systems, that buzzer systems, that um, every person who walks into the school needs to be uh, looked at and heard from before they're, they are given entrance. So I think safety and security is a big threat to our district. Um, decreasing funds from the state and from our tax revenue, I think, is also a very big problem that we're facing. And also, um, the disputed taxes of, um, from our residents that holds a lot of our money in um, uh, out of our hands, money that, that is really due to um, support the schools and help our students. So we, I think that's, that's a danger for us as well. I'm a positive thinker, so I take uh, threats as an opportunity. You know, in gap analysis, we do benchmarks and all that, and the threats as always considered as an opportunity. For Parkway, I see ACT and college readiness as a threat as well as an opportunity. 
Um, currently, as per the Missouri District um, Education District Act score, we are, you know, for past four years, we have been going down. And the highest we had was 24.1 in 2007. And I think it's a threat as well as it is an opportunity. We should not lose the sight of an education. That's most important. You know, there are other school districts that are competing and they are surpassing us. And we should not lose the focus from education. Thank you. Ms. Applebaum. Um, I agree with everything that's been said, as well as um, continuing to challenge our students in the classrooms and have them prepare for the real world after uh, high school and college, and also closing the achievement gap. We're getting, you know, we're slowly moving in that, but I think that that's one of our challenges. I don't think of it as a threat, but more of a, just a challenge, and declining enrollment. I think that that's one of our um, struggles right now, too, but safety and security is a big one, and repairing our buildings and making sure that not just a physical safety, but um, emotionally inside the schools. All right. Mr. Red, Red Hood, this is going to be for you. You get to be first. Sure. What do you view ideal and maximum class sizes to be at the elementary, middle, and high school levels? I have to say I only know the partial answer to that, and uh, I would only speak for high school. I think the average uh, should be about between 13 and 15 students per teacher. So if you really want to get uh, the maximum out from a teacher and get a better result, I think it should not increase more than 15 students per class. Um, I, I feel that the classrooms are, are going to be different so that if there's special needs or um, it, I think each class is going to be different in how they were, would be numbered, but I'm thinking that a comfortable number depends on how that class is advan advancing and what the struggles are in that classroom. So it can be, you know, 15 to 20, but it also depends on what those struggles are for that teacher in that classroom. We also have to bear in mind the budget that we have. We would all love to have class sizes that are 10 or 12 students per teacher, but realistically, we don't have the budget to support that. So we keep our class sizes below the state um, directives, which is 17 for kindergarten, 22 for fifth grade. So the, that answers the elementary part. For high schools, we have 16.71 full-time em, uh, equivalent employees, teachers per student. So some, some classes, like a PE class, for instance, can take a bigger class size. But some classes, um, for instance, a debate class or a math class might need a smaller uh, class size for every student to be helped by the teacher. All right, you're going to get this question. Ms. Applebaum, how do you believe Parkway should respond to the issue of student transfers from unaccredited school districts? So for student transfers, you know, it is disruptive. It's long bus rides. It's, um, it takes them out of their own environment. But I think one of the focuses we should look at is how can we partner to maybe improve the schools and get them accredited? Um, it's not, you know, we should be looking at a solution, not just, okay, temporarily we can move them in here and take care of them, which we can. I believe we had 83 students or so that we took care of, and it was okay, but if we had to take any more, we probably would have to look at our budget and make some adjustments. But we really should be looking at how can we help these students get accredited, what can we do to uh, help them instead of making it, um, you know, uncomfortable for all parties. Ms. Feldman. I do believe that the transfer law that we're living under right now is a law that was put in place without really having thought it through. Um, the amounts of money that Normandy and Riverview Gardens have to spend paying for transportation and tuition for their students are definitely harming the students that are left behind. I really don't think anybody is being helped with how it's being worked on per uh, currently. A group of Missouri superintendents have worked together to come up with a plan that they have presented to the legislature that would have St. Louis County and other surrounding area um, uh, personnel, staff, teachers push into these unaccredited districts and help them bring up their standards, help them help their staffs learn 
um, different ways to engage and to help the children in those districts and like Mrs. Applebaum said, accredit, the, accredit those schools. All right. um, regarding student transfer, I would say there are pros and cons. Um, number one, um, we are trying to cope here with the performance of the um, students within the school district. So that can impact when you are getting students uh, transfer from other school districts which are probably not as competitive or as performing as the parkway. So that can bring down the standards. Secondly, it can be disruptive to the community as well because we are trying to improve our standards and all this uh, transfer can cause budgetary issues as well when we are working with, uh, um, especially when we are dependent on the community taxes. sort of on the same subject. And this begins with Ms. Feldman. How do you think this transfer law should be fixed if you were in Jefferson City and um, had a wand? Say it again. And had a wand. Boy, if I had a wand in Jefferson City, I'd be a really happy young lady. <laughs> um, as I was saying before, the superintendents uh, in Missouri have gathered, they've spent a lot of time, and they're a bunch of really smart, smart men and women. And they have some good solutions to the problem. So if I was in Jefferson City, I would take a good hard look at the superintendent's plan for these unaccredited districts. But also, I think I would work on school by school. So in other words, not di um, unaccrediting an entire district, because there may be pockets of success and achievement. So I would look at schools one by one in districts that are suffering, and accredit those that deserve to be accredited and really work harder on those that, that are falling behind. I really need to study on that because this is something I never thought somebody would ask me, especially when I don't have a background. But I would say one thing that it needs to be looked at each community because think about, it's not about the um, education transfer, it's about the kids. You know, you are messing with students' education, you're messing with their future. You know. When transfer happens, that means the school district is not performing good or the school is not performing good. The community has to do something about that. The government has to do something about that. They can't just have these kind of laws and let a uh, student be transferred to different school districts. I would just wave the magic wand to make it happen. <laughs> um, I agree with both what um, Beth said and Sudhir that it really the focus is like what the superintendents are doing and the community probably, I mean, community involvement would also help, but getting those accredited, you know, that's really the focus should be, and like Beth was saying, it's not just wave that magic wand and it'll happen overnight to all the schools, but work on the pockets of the ones that you can work on first and then focus on those harder ones. But it, it can be done, it just takes a collaborative effort with a lot of people. All righty. Mr. Rehud, you start with this one. What are your thoughts on Common Core? Are you for it or against it? Or we uh, have uh, nine questions on that. <laughs> so, well, um, there is. Um, it, I won't. I think I need more than two minutes for this, or one minute for this. But let me tell you guys something before um, I give you my opinion on Common Core. Common. Um, the question I, I always think before Common Core comes in my mind is, are we not happy with what we have right now? You know, is there a dire need for some kind of a major change? What people, all these people that have graduated, are they ruining the economy, the entire world? What's going on? Because why is Common Core so important? And if that is the pro if that if we can answer that, so here is a, a good example. If somebody comes and tells you guys that we need to start driving on the left side of the road, um, how would you feel? You know, this is our kids' education. We need to think it seriously. We cannot just let some standards come in place. And I have heard Parkway has better standards, so the question is, why Common Core is required then? Um, to me, Common Core is really like a, a, a benchmark. It's a benchmark of where should people be at what level? Where should the kids be at what level? And Parkway's always had higher standards. So um, it, it, using it as a guideline 
but still holding our standards, it's really just making sure that pe the, the students in Missouri are, are, are learning at a level where they should be. And you know, we, we've always said that our, ours higher. To me, it's a benchmark. Well, it is true that Parkway standards are tougher than the Common Core state standards that were um, approved by 46 governors about oh, six or seven years ago and passed by the uh, Missouri legislature a good five years ago. The problem that's coming up now is the people that are currently in the legislature were not serving then because of Missouri's term limits. So when the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education introduced Common Core to the Missouri legislature, they, those people have moved on and the legislature has not done a good job of keeping up to date on what Common Core entails. What it does entail is it's a set of standards. It's what do we want our students to take with them when they leave Parkway or when they, they finish a, a course or a grade level. We want them to learn at least the same things that every student across America is learning so that when they prepare to take the ACT, they're all on an even playing field. And when they get to college, they will have the same background, at least at a minimum, in order to compete with other students from across the country. I'm just going to give you another Common Core. <laughs> no, I'm going to skip off Common Core because I don't know the answer. All right, this is for you. How does the school board support and encourage teacher learning and professional development? Well, one of the ways is we make it accessible um, for, we encourage them to get certifications and continue with their education and development. And even with the PLCs, I mean, collaborate, collaborating and working with the other teachers at their levels, um, that's a great way for personal development. You're learning by experience from other people as well. So we're always encouraging the teachers to build on their professional development um, and advance. I'm very proud to say that we have, I think, a new 14 or 15 nationally board certified teachers that we welcomed to the ranks just a few months ago, and I think Parkway now has a total of 30, where several years ago we just had 36, where we where we just had a, uh, just a couple just a few years ago. 36 what? National national board certified teachers. Um, I also was just given a copy of the course guide for our teachers for over the summer and the course opportunities are very vast and intriguing and interesting and I think that when teachers take these courses on their own time in the summer they learn so much that they can share with their students and they've got all these exciting things to do when they get back to school in the fall. Mr. Rahud. I'm sorry, I don't have a lot of background on what's going on in the teachers' development, but number four on my priority li list is teachers' professional development. And that I consider as an investment, because if we invest in our teachers, we're going to reap great benefits. So that's something we should really focus on that. Thank you. You get the first question. If money were no object, what initiative would you champion for Parkway? Well, money is always an object. I know. <laughs> we're going to so talk about taxes later. First, first let's, let's um, base my answer on reality, because we have to fight this battle every single day. But um, the thing that has that inspired me to run for a third term is experiential learning. And what that is, is giving our students, primarily at this point our high school juniors and seniors, but we're going to um, see it flow down to lower grades, real life work experience. And this will take our students to college or to their next learning experience so much better prepared for real world uh, work than just going to class does. Not that going to class is not important, but our experiential learning program at the Spark Academy in Chesterfield Mall that just started this year, it, it's really changing uh, students' lives. And uh, my son has said, after he observed the program, that he wishes that Spark would have been around when he was in high school. He definitely would have taken advantage of it. And I think he's actually quite jealous that it wasn't there. So anybody who doesn't know about Spark, I encourage you to find out. <laughs> If money was not an issue, I promise you guys to give you the number one school district in the state of Missouri. 
Not only that, but our sports, all our curricular activities will have the best resources that our kids would not have to worry about it. And I think that should be sufficient enough for any resident or a taxpayer. Thank you. If money was no object, like that said, but it is, um, I would expand, because we are a, we're a global world now, and learning from other countries and everything is very important. And I would expand on the uh, language, language arts, because I think that it's more and more important with companies like where I work, if you speak other languages, you can really go far and you can work more global. So I would say if we had a magic wand, that would be one of the things. All right, Common Core, we're back. Common Core will lead to greater federal involvement. Is that good? Um, no, my, I have five uh, top priorities, and the fifth one is to safeguard our education system from unnecessary political intervention. And I think that's pretty much I, I wanted to say is I wanted to keep all the political interventions away because what happens is Take, for example, Common Core right now, which is being so much debated. What if a government comes tomorrow and that wipes up Common Core? What will happen to those kids that are going through that education system? Has anyone thought about that? So absolutely, I'm against that, and that should be enough. All right. With Common Core, um, we still develop the curriculum, and we still determine on how we teach it. So. Um, I, I mean, I don't think that the government should dictate how we do the teaching and the curriculum, but I still see how they want to level out where people, where the kids need to be. Common Core did not come from the federal government. Common Core came from the Conference of Governors. It was an initiative that was started at the state level, which education has always been at the state level um, throughout our history. So uh, there's really nothing, I think it's a misnomer. In, out in the world, we see a lot of people who are anti-Common Core, and I truly believe they don't, they don't have an understanding of what it is. But um, I, I'm all for the highest standards possible for our students, and like Kim said, the, the district writes its own curriculum. We just need to make sure that certain things are covered so that our students will be prepared for their next endeavor. Is this a Common Core one, too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Um, what are your thoughts on teacher tenure versus expectations, performance expectations? Well, I believe that students learn in a variety of ways, and I know that that's a challenge for teachers to keep up with how to teach each student, but they should be accountable for teachers or students' improvement. Um, not all kids are good test takers, and they get to learn, you know, the teachers can learn how to develop those students in their classroom, those that aren't good test takers, but they should be at least accountable for each student improving. They may not be at the end of the year at the level where they're supposed to be, but did they show improvement? And I think that that should be on the teachers to be able to create the curriculum for the kids in a way that they can at least improve as they go along. I'm proud to say that I'm very supportive of teacher tenure. I think that just as with our legislature, when we turn over every few years, we get a bunch of inexperienced legislators who don't know how to, how to write and pass laws, the same thing would hold true for teachers. If we're constantly turning over teachers, then we're not gonna have the experience that we need to sustain student achievement. I believe that um, it, the five years where teachers are probationary are crucial to determine if someone has the skills necessary to be a competent and effective teacher. And within those five years, if the, if the um, uh, administration of a school finds that a teacher is not competent or effective, then they cannot or should not give that teacher a, a permanent contract. So um, that's what I think. Teacher tenure, um, as I learned from the communication, is five years, and I think um, we have to think from both perspectives. I can understand the teacher frustration sometimes that they feel like they are doing a great job and they, they don't get um, as much rewards as the other teachers. But at the same time, you know, there is a process, process for us to understand 
um, their performance, um, understand how they are fitting the parkway cultures, and also at the same time, um, it allows them uh, to work towards the next step in the process. Again, when we have a great school district, I don't think any teacher would have a problem working five years to get on that board. So it's a win-win situation for both teachers and the administration. All right, Ms. Feldman, this is, you began. <coughs> Um, where does Parkway rank in the in terms of college readiness in the, in the state? Are you looking for a number specific? I don't have a number. I, I've got I've got a couple of kids who are in, right at that that stage of life. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, the students that I know that are my son's age, he's a sophomore in college, um, that have come from Parkway are doing exceedingly well in college. And my daughter, as I said before, is a, central, a senior at Central High. She's preparing for college. And I would also say that she and her classmates are exceedingly well prepared for college. All right. College readiness is one of the components that uh, is very uh, seriously considered when ranking uh, colleges and students, uh, schools. Sorry. Um, if you look online and just Google uh, uh, college readiness, you will see Parkway has 38.7% college readiness. And I think we can always work uh, to improve that because that's something uh, it's, which is very low. Um, just to give you guys a quick update, um, Metro Academics has 72.8, which is number one right now. Um, Clayton High has a 60.3. Market High has a 45.3, which is a Rockwood School District. So it's very unfortunate that Rockwood is actually doing better than Parkway. Um, I can just say that I think that my son is very prepared to go on to college. Like I said earlier, I'm not ready for him to. Um, but we do have 89% uh, of our Parkway graduates do go on to college. So whether they're ready and go all the way through, I don't know if we have those statistics. All right. Um, Mr. Rahad, this question begins with you. Um, what is your involvement in Project Parkway? And for those of us that don't know what it is, would somebody explain it? I'm so sorry to say that, that I do not have uh, any uh, information or involvement with the Project Parkway, so I apologize for that. All right. Project Parkway. You broke it. Or maybe the battery broke. It says low. <laughs> My battery died. <laughs> Um, Project Parkway, that's where we get the capable, curious, confident learners, and um, can you talk? Pardon me? Oh. Can you hear me? There you go. Now I'm screaming. <laughs> uh, it, and it may lose a little, it may have lost a little momentum, but you know, it's a good way to gather information from stakeholders and to make sure that the people's voice is heard. And I think one of the things that we can look at is can we communicate? a little bit more of as we're listening to the people's voices and what are we doing with those? You know, it's we hear you, but now what have you done with it? So I think that would be one of the things. Um, it's basically. I know I'm Pro Project Parkway is Parkway strategic planning initiative. We're finishing our fifth year. It is, uh, goes along with the MSIP 5 cycle. We're getting ready to start Project Parkway 2.0. When we started Project Parkway five years ago, the steering committee came up with a mission which guides all the work, a vision, and then a set of learning principles. And from that, 400 or so community members from all over the community, both employees and citizens, participated in, in meetings. We were broken down into 30 different subcommittees, and we, we work on problems. We uh, gather data, we do research, and everything that we do here in the district relates back to our mission and our six goals, which are achievement, character, hiring and retaining the best teachers, managing our resources, uh, uh, PLCs, and then I'm missing one. Anyway, that's what Project Parkway is. Acronyms, we love them. See? <clears throat> this is a, a 
I'll give you a minute to think about this. And if this is going to be, um, this, no, he got that one, the first Here's one. Michelle. Yeah, Alyssa, will you, Ms. Applebaum. Me. Why are you running for this office? Why should we vote for you? Because, I'm nice, no, I'm kidding. Um, why should you vote for me? Um, I've had the privilege of serving for the past three years, and I have learned a tremendous, I've learned a tremendous amount. Thank you for telling me to put it near my mouth. Um, I've learned a tremendous amount, and I really truly feel that those first three years are a learning experience. There is so much involved in running a school district, and you really don't know an, until you're actually in that position. There's so much. Those first three years, you're overwhelmed with a lot of things that you're still trying to absorb. Um, I've been a resident here for 20 years, and uh, my 30 seconds are right, right there. But I do feel that the learning curve and my passion for Parkway and that I've got kids in the school district um, are most reasons of why you should vote for me. As I said in my opening statement, I'm serving my seventh year, so that's given me a lot of time to learn. District has changed a lot over the last six or seven years, and I'm a person who embraces change, and I'm always looking for the best way to do something, not necessarily the way we've always done it, but what's best for students, what's best for the district's financial help, what's best for teacher development, what's best for any of our, our initiatives. So the reasons that I think you should vote for me is I'm extremely devoted to Parkway. I'm a, I'm a champion. I'm passionate about student success, and when I say that, I mean all students, each and every student, not just the top performers, but each and every student in Parkway. I'm an eager learner. I'm a hard worker, and I have time to devote to the position. The reason I'm running for Parkway School Board is because I have a passion, and I want to give something back to the community. That's my number one goal. Uh, with that being said, I'm an effective communicator. I can you know, pretty much talk to anybody. I'm sorry, I'm not good talking right now, but other than that. Also, I'm very close to the community. I can reach, I can talk to the people and you know, meet, understand them. I love to listen to new perspective. It's not just uh, my way or highway. I want to understand. If I'm wrong, I would love to be proved to be wrong. So you know, I, I, I like to hear different perspective. I'm a decision maker. When it comes, when I'm, uh, I'm, under, I'm convinced of something, when I have a clear understanding of where I stand, then it doesn't take me too much time to make the decision. And again, I bring my values, ethics, and morals, which is more important for who I am today. And I'm a, I, I'm a data analyst by profession, so if uh, somebody's giving me um, a speech about something, it doesn't, it doesn't impress me. I need to have a data to prove it. All right, Ms. Feldman, this begins with you. What needs to be done to strengthen, um, that's not what it's a budget question. Oh, sorry. What can you impact, how can you impact the budget in Parkway to bring back the required fund balance? That's a great question. Um, Parkway policy dictates that we maintain 17% of our budget as a fund balance, and we're currently at about 14%. Three years ago, when Dr. Marty first came to Parkway and Mark Stockwell came back as our CFO, they did a deep analysis of our, of our budget and our resources, and they found that we were seriously in the hole. So um, instead of just saying we're going to cut out the, the frills, uh, Dr. Marty formed committees of people to study where we could better spend our resources. And over the course of the two years, we cut about $14 million from our budget. So now we're at the point where we're, we're back on track and we have to maintain our levels of spending so as not to fall back into the trap of overspending like we did before. We're, for instance, we're bringing in Kelly, uh, Kelly Sports Marketing as a way to raise funds outside of the re regular revenue stream of taxes. So this is something that um, it's, I think we're only the second district in Missouri to bring this in. It's a way of raising extra funds for extracurricular activities. Regarding the budget, I would always say that it's always a challenging sub subject and there's always going to be pro uh, ups and downs. What we have to do is we have to manage efficiently wherever needed at the time. If, there is a, if, if it, it is not a priority, if it's something we can cut back, it's not going to affect the students and the education, 
then we can move that and target into something that's needed. Again, I have heard about the Kelly Marketing Services Program, and I think something like that should always be brought in where we can save the money and use other resources available in the community for our kids. Well, collaborating with other, uh, other people and ideas always helps. That's where the Kelly came from. So um, I believe that, you know, listening to your stakeholders, listening to how, what can you look at to streamline, and just it's always, always going to be something that we have to evaluate on a regular basis. Where can we move things around or what can we do um, as long as we're not affecting the education quality for the kids? All right, this starts with Mr. Rahud. Um, when did you decide to, to um, run for the school board? I think almost six months ago, or more than that actually, because when I was uh, getting involved in my son's education, you know, I always, as a parent, and I recommend, as a parent, we should always research where the school stands. We, you know, I'm not a person who would just look at all the apps and all the great news. It is very important for us to know where the school stands. And when I started to look at the research and the act scores falling down and the college readiness is very, very low, that's where I thought that this is something I can uh, give my time to and, you know, give our community a best school district. Because at the end of the day, if this is how our schools are being ranked and being recognized, then why not focus on those and bring up the education system? I think once we have a better school district, then everybody would be proud. So. I decided to get involved 20 years ago when we moved to this area. Um, my husband and I, when we were looking for a house, decided to move into Parkway because of the school district. And although I didn't run for the Board of Education, I knew that once we had our children, I would be involved in the schools on a regular basis, which I was. And uh, it just actually led to once they hit high school, I just wanted to be more involved. And when they hit high school, it seems that it kind of trickles when you're involved. So I thought, what better way than to join the board, uh, to, to join the board, of, the board of Education? Um, I was very fortunate. I had the opportunity to join the board without having to run for election. I filled a vacancy. I was actually appointed by the sitting school board to fill a vacancy. So I had nine or 10 months under my belt to um, establish myself and see how I liked the work and see how it fit in with my family schedule before I actually did that scary thing and put my name on a ballot, which let me tell you, for those of you who have never done it, it is not a fun thing to do. Um, the, the, prospect of, the prospect of losing is, is, never, is never very pretty, but I've been really, uh, I've loved every minute of, of my time on the school board and I look forward to being able to continue for another three years. All right, I think this is going to be our last question. Yes, and then be thinking about your two minutes as your wrap up. And, oh, we're going to, that's right. So you, you have to listen to one. me first and then wrap up with me, right? Yeah. Um, how will you manage to devote the significant time needed to work on the school board with your other commitments? Actually, I've been doing that for the past three years, and um, it, it is a lot of time. It really is. And I was once told by a wise man in the back room that a, it's what you put into it. And if you are passionate about it, it, it does take a lot of time, that's for sure. But if you're passionate about the school district and the education of your children, you will make the time to participate. Anybody who knows me personally knows that I don't waste time. Um, <clears throat> starting in August, this coming August, August of 2015, I will no longer have kids in my house. So that will free up a lot of time. Also, I work part-time. I've worked part-time ever since I've been on the school board night. My job allows that I have tons of flexibility in my hours. And I would say that, um, I hope my boss isn't listening, but I'd say that I give Parkway at least as much attention or more than my paying job. Actually, it's a different story for me. Yesterday, I was talking to one of the voters, and I told him, I said, I have a busy schedule, busy life. But that's where it matters the most, when you don't have a time, and you make the time for a good cause. And that's why I'm, you know, even with my life, where really uh, time matters the most, I'm taking time so that I can play a role. And if I can bring our school district a couple grades up, because my vision is to take it to the number one 
If I can succeed in that, then I think it's worth spending that time for the school district. All right. And I, it's going to go from Ms. Applebaum to Mr. Rahud to Ms. Feldman. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight and listening to your board candidates. And I'll try to keep this short, sweet, and simple. Although there are many issues within Parkway which can be addressed, I will be your advocate for education for all. We need to continue to find creative ways to provide education opportunities for all. Safety is not only assuring that our buildings are safe, but also that students feel safe emotionally in the schools. Financial stability in building our funds. And I'm eager to continue to have discussions with students, teachers, and residents to help Parkway further lead the way in education. It's about the kids, not just ensuring they are curious, capable, and confident learners, but also ensuring that they're prepared to use the knowledge they have that they've learned and apply it in the real world, beyond a college. I'm also proud to say that my husband will actually vote for me this time. He was concerned about how much time it was going to take, and it did. It took a lot of family time, but I'm proud to say that he has become one of my biggest supporters, along with my now uh, newly registered, registered voter 18-year-old son, who finally gets to vote for his mom. And I'm going to quote someone, and I believe it came from maybe Chris Jacob. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a Doctor Who movie. But it's not what we have done, but what we will do. We still have a long way to go. First of all, thank you so much, League of Women Voters, for allowing me to come on this stage. Of course, this is the first time, actually, I'm talking to the public in USA, so I apologize if I was nervous or not having the answers. But, you know, after talking and after a few minutes, I realized I got my confidence back, so I can talk to you guys now. <laughs> One thing I want to say today is, no matter who gets on the board, but please do not lose the sight of education, which is the most important for our kids and our community. And whenever you make a decision, think of all the pros and cons, you know, especially when anything politically involved, please be very careful in making the decision because you are making the decision for our, our, every kid in this community. It's not just my kid, it's not just yours, but every kid in this community. So we have a really, really responsible role, and I think any decision that we make requires a lot of deliberations. And my, my only request to you guys is please be careful when you vote uh, on any decision. So again, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for listening. I hope um, my English was not that bad, but thanks again. People often ask me why I serve. The simple answer is that I love this work. I've worked very hard to learn about Parkway, its students. I've gotten to know so many students, teachers, administrators, nurses, bus drivers, custodians, school secretaries, IT professionals, government and community leaders. My life has been tremendously enhanced by these relationships. One valuable lesson that I have learned in the past almost seven years is the lesson of perspective. When I came to this position, I was just a soccer mom in tennis shoes. I really just only had the perspective of a, of a Parkway parent. And now I've learned to look at things through many different lenses. And that has enhanced me as a person my, in my entire life. I'm proud of the work that is done in this district every day by dedicated professional, professionals and our eager students. In closing, we have a bright future in Parkway. I look forward to being a part of, and here I go, I'm going to read really fast again because there's so many things, the implementation of our 2014 bond improvements, including safety and security of our buildings, the new elementary grade cards, math and world language program evaluations, improvement in our gap group achievement, growth of our character education among our students and our staff, new sports marketing program, expansion of an adventure club to all 18 of our elementary schools, expansion of the SPARK program strands, being a voice for Parkway students with Missouri legislators, building our district's reserves, increasing minority staff recruiting, development of Project Parkway 2.0, just to name a few things that are on the horizon. I leave you with one closing thought. Continuity and leadership is one of the most important factors in education. Thank you all for coming.
Thank you, each of the candidates, for participating. Um, and thank you for the questions. Um, if you found this tonight's forum to be useful, think about joining us by becoming a member of the League of Women Voters. We also have men members. And most important, um, coming out tomorrow morning in your post-dispatch is the voter's guide. This is information on every candidate who um, filled it out. And it's also online at STL Today and on the League of Women Voters chart. It has all the propositions. And I think we have 90 propositions in St. Louis County. Um, you can, uh, you still cannot, you have, it's, the voting is a week from Tuesday and it's from six o'clock in the morning to 7 p.m. And remember, democracy is not a spectator sport. Tell your family and friends to be part of the solution and vote. Good night. Um, it's on the, it's in the post dispatch tomorrow morning. Yes. Do you get the newspaper? You can have mine. It's also online. It's on STL today and on the League.